Lesson 6.6, .6, Model Division with Arrays. We can use arrays to model and solve division problems. Here our equation says 6 divided by 2. We put 6 counters into 2 rows, then count how many are in each row. We have 3 in each row, so we know the answer, the quotient, is 3. 6 is how many we have in all, and it's divided into two rows, two groups, with three in each group. We can look at it as we need to find how many rows there are. We use six counters, and we put three in each group. We end up with two groups, two rows, and we count the rows. We can divide to find the number of equal rows or the number in each row. An array can help us divide by showing how many rows or how many in each row. We can write a division equation to show how many rows of 8 are in 24. We know there's 24 in all and there's 8 in each row. We take our counters and we put 8 in a row until we have 24 counters. There's three rows. We have 24 in all. There's eight in each row. We have three rows. 24 is our dividend, eight is our divisor, and three is our quotient. We can make an array of 21 counters with the same number of counters in three rows. We know how many rows we're supposed to have, there's three of them, and we add counters to each row until we have 21 counters with the same amount in each row. So we don't know how many are in the row, we only know that we have three rows. So let's make a column for one row, two row, three rows, and let's keep filling them with the same amount of counters until we have 21. So I have 21 counters in all right here, and I can start putting them into rows. Now I have three rows with two in them. I have three rows with three in each row. And we keep doing this equally until we have all of them with the same number in each row. Got a couple more. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven are in each row. We know that there's seven. 21 divided by three is equal to seven. So we write a division equation to fit our array. We know we have 21 in all. We know that there's three rows, and we now know there are seven in each row. 21 is our dividend, three is our divisor, and seven is our quotient, our answer. We can use counters to make an array, then we can solve the problem. How many rows of three are in 12? First thing we do is count out 12 counters, because we know that's how many in all. We make rows of three, so we're going to have three in each row, and we count to 12. Then we count how many rows we made. That's one row of three. Now we have two rows of three, three rows of three, four rows of three. Twelve in all divided by three in each row is equal to four rows. How many rows of 7 are in 28? We make rows of 7 as we count to 28. So here we have 28 counters. We've already counted them out. We know there's 28 here. We're going to make rows of 7. That's one row of 7, two rows of 7, three rows of 7, four rows of 7. We count how many rows we have. We have made four. 
our equation is 28, that's how many we had in all, divided by 7, that's how many were in each row, is equal to 4. That's how many rows we made. We can show two ways that we can make an array for 14 divided by 2. We can use 2 as how many rows we have, or the 2 could be how, are, how many are in each row. We count out 14 counters, and we put them in two equal rows, two equal groups. We see there's 7 in each group, so 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. We can also put 2 in each row. We still have 14 counters, but now we have 2 in each row, and we've made 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 rows. 14 divided by 2 is equal to 7. So we can make them as 2 rows or 2 in each row for the array. Bob has 32 seeds to plant in his garden. He wants to plant four seeds in each row. How many rows will Bob plant? We can draw rows with four counters each until we get to 32. Then we can count how many rows we made. We put four in a row, so that's four, and we keep drawing them. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. With four in each row, then we count the rows. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. There's 32 in all. There are four in each row, and we made eight rows. So Bob will plant eight rows. A store sold 10 shirts on Monday and 20 shirts on Tuesday. If customers bought five shirts each, how many customers bought shirts? So let's circle our important numbers first. We can underline other important information. It's important that 10 shirts were sold on Monday, 20 shirts on Tuesday, and that customers bought five shirts each. We need to use addition and division to solve this problem. The first thing we need to do is find out how many in all. We have 10 shirts on Monday and 20 shirts on Tuesday. That's 30 in all. Our dividend, how many we have in all, is going to be 30. We know that customers bought five shirts each, so we're going to do 30 divided by 5. So we've used addition to find how many in all. Now we're going to use division to find out how many customers bought shirts. We can make an array. There's five for five shirts for each customer. And we can draw these until we get to 30 with five in each row. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows with five in each row. That means there were six customers. 30 divided by 5 is equal to 6. As we draw our counters with the same number in each row, we count how many rows we made to get to 30. So that would be the 30th one down there. So you can use arrays to model and solve division problems. And remember, the divisor, the pink number right here, let's see if I can point to it, that divisor, it can actually represent the rows or the columns. It can re represent how many rows you make or how many are in each row, as we saw when we changed this array around for 14 divided by 2. I hope you have a really nice day, and I'll see you for the next lesson. Bye.